G'day all, today I'm going to convert this patio pond with bog filter into an anoxic filter. This bog filter works great, but I've been wanting to test out the anoxic filter as taught by Dr. Kevin Novak for a while, so let's do it. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel and website is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. There's quite a lot of science that goes into an anoxic filter. Now I'm not a scientist, so I'm going to try and explain it in easy terms to the best of my ability. I'll keep coming back to this terrible sketch as I try and explain how certain things work. So first let's start with anoxic. That means low in oxygen. In fact, very low, almost non-existent, but still present amounts. This is different to anaerobic, which you've probably heard of. Anaerobic is no oxygen at all. So an anoxic filter is creating a low oxygen environment. The low oxygen environment here is in these lily baskets. As you can see, there is still plenty of water coming in to the filter area. And then as it splashes back into the pond, it's still creating lots of oxygen. So we still want lots of oxygen in the pond for the fish. We know that's a good thing. But why do we want to create a low oxygen environment in the filter? The simple answer is to complete the nitrogen cycle by eliminating nitrate. So how does that work? So traditionally, here's how a filter in a pond works. Fish and decomposing plant material produce ammonia. Bacteria come along and process the ammonia into nitrite. Nitrite is then converted by more bacteria into nitrate. Nitrate is less harmful for fish, but can build up to dangerous levels in the pond. Some plants are good at processing nitrate, others not so much. Even with plants in the pond, if they're allowed to drop leaves or decompose, they will release more ammonia and round and round the cycle goes. Eventually, it may be necessary to do a water change to dilute the nitrate levels. This process is completely natural and I find it pretty cool. All that's needed is surface area and oxygen, but the bright product is nitrate, which will help feed opportunistic algae. Dr. Novak's anoxic filter has found a way to complete the cycle so that there are no or very little nitrates. As with any filter, it will depend on the amount of fish and feed going into the system. But he claims that one of these lily basket filters is enough for one adult koi fish. That's a big fish that's messy and eats a lot of food. So that's pretty cool. So how do these baskets remove nitrate? Nitrate is made up of one part nitrogen and three parts oxygen. So what happens within the baskets is that in the low oxygen environment, yet another type of bacteria live and they steal the oxygen from the nitrate. Now we have the one part nitrogen left. That is still in the pond water, but the second it's able to escape into the atmosphere, it does. And bam, there goes the nitrate. Now, those of you that follow the channel know how much I love bog filters. All my ponds with bogs have zero nitrates, at least according to my test kits. Like I said, I'm no scientist, but what I suspect is happening is that as the water moves up through the filter, the common bacterias are converting ammonia into nitrite and then nitrate. And as this is happening, they are consuming oxygen. Once the oxygen gets too low, the other bacteria thrive and start stealing the oxygen from the nitrate. Now all we have is the nitrogen, which will gas off as the water returns to the pond. But the way that these baskets are constructed, they still have another trick up their sleeve. They can trap and remove ammonia directly. As I explain how this happens, I think now is also a good time to explain how the baskets are made. To make the filter baskets, you just need as many lily baskets as you have fish. Remember one basket per adult koi. 
so about 60 centimetres or 24 inches of fish per basket. Now, <laughs> that's a lot of fish. If this works, that's just insane. You'll be filling the baskets with 100% clay kitty litter, no added scent or chemicals. I'm in Australia and this is the one I've found to hold together the best. To test it, I placed it in a jar and filled with water. Some of the other brands I tried just turned into mush, but this held its structure much better. You'll also need a source of iron to help kickstart the bacteria. Dr. Novak recommends laterite. I ordered laterite but received palignite. It's got iron in it, so it should work just fine. He does mention that you can use other sources of iron if you cannot source laterite. So building the baskets is simple enough. You just half fill the baskets with kitty litter. You place some laterite or your iron source in the center. Then top off with more kitty litter. You can add an aquatic plant to each basket if you want. I added some water fringe. It's not critical though. Even without plants, the bacteria will do their thing. Then just add some decorative pebble and rinse the baskets off. And that's the baskets built. It's much more simple to build than to understand the science. So I mentioned that they can trap ammonia particles directly. They do this because ammonia particles have a positive charge. The clay kitty litter and the laterite have a negative charge. This attracts the positive ammonia particles into the basket. The ammonia is then either consumed by the plants or consumed by more bacteria. So that the ions or particles can flow freely into the baskets, it's important that the water is able to move freely all around them. I'm just using some pipe offcuts to keep them raised up off the bottom of the filter box. The water entering the filter needs to be diffused so that it doesn't just blast through the baskets. This also makes it different to a bog filter or really any other traditional filter. The water doesn't need to pass through the baskets, it just needs to move past and around them. Again, that's because of the positive and negative charges interacting. This means that the baskets will not clog or need cleaning. It also means that if you had these in the pond itself, if the power went out, you would still have filter action. I'm open to converting one of my wine barrel ponds into a no-pump anoxic pond to see if it works. I know a lot of people are always interested in no pump ponds or ponds that could run on just a solar pump and this might be a viable solution. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Anyway, for my diffuser I just drilled a bunch of holes in this 90mm pipe. It was being used in the previous filter. I then filled the pipe with a sponge you want to capture as much sediment that will be pumped up from the pond as you can. I've also placed the pond in a pot and covered it with a filter sponge. This will trap more sediment, but it will also stop any baby fish getting sucked into the pump. So in this trial pond, the pump is in the pond, pumping the water up into the filter box with the baskets. It then enters the diffuser pipe with the sponge and flows out of the vertical pipe in the middle back into the pond. This was originally an aquaponic setup, so I have some pipes running along the veranda. The valves help me regulate where the water flows. These days I like to grow impatience up along here. Gives me heaps of colour along the veranda during the warmer months. It's very early spring here, so no impatience just yet and then the water just flows back into the pond. So that's my understanding of how the filter works and how I've constructed these baskets to give it a test. Now for those of you legends who have made it this far into the video, you can help me select the fish that will go into this pond. Keep in mind they need to be small. The pond basin is only 200 litres. They need to be cold tolerant and able to handle fluctuating temperatures. As the pipes running along the veranda heat up, the water then cools down rapidly once the sun goes down. 
my initial thoughts are white clouds, rice fish, maybe even an axolotl, <laughs> maybe all three. Uh, anyway, I'm open to suggestions. Whatever we decide, I'll feed them every day so we can really give the filter a good test. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.